and he just ran into the blue corner by way of Ratchet Crane MMA. about to get underway here at Fight Star Championship. This bout brought to you by Strike Series. Rory Foster in the blue shorts, Justin Springer in the red shorts. Bit of an unknown quantity here, David. 6-0, and oh, but as an independent. It's sure. almost unheard of. Yeah, uh, you know, he could possibly just be training in individual styles in, you know, perhaps a Thai gym, a, a grappling gym. Yeah, his, his corner team, um, Springer, they're all wearing CSW, Combat Submission Wrestling Tops. I don't know if that's a, a legit affiliation they have or mm. if they just like Eric Paulson and his, his game, his style, his gym. Yeah, as you say, very rare to see somebody with the independent tag at 6-0, and but here we are now. Springer looking to trade leather early on, and that's some brutal right hands going in. Looks some very explosive confident. punches. Eats one back though, Foster with a nice jab. Yeah, good work from Foster. Just trying to weather this early storm from Justin Springer. What a leg kick. Definitely got some power here as Springer. You can see that Foster's not liking it too much. He's kind of trying to dive in on that takedown whenever Springer's swarming him. And here we go. What are we going to see now? Dumped on his head. Stuff well from Justin Springer. Needs to get those hands up, Foster. Dirty boxing from Springer there. Here we go, might see a takedown. Good bicep control from Springer. 
Swimming for the underhooks. Will Foster take him down now? It's a prime position. The feet are together. The legs are together. Good. He's Springer swimming for that underhook look. Trying to yank Foster back up high. Good takedown defence thus far. Good from strength Springer. from Springer as well. Foster's after this. He's relentless. He wants this takedown. Well, he wants no part of the Springer striking, David, does he, after this start? I like his thinking. I'd like to see him switch to a single. Against the cage, I'd like to see him switch to a single. That double's not working. Springer's keeping his legs quite wide. Drop on the single, perhaps run the pipe, pick up an ankle pick. Oh, Springer's not turned him away from the cage. I thought he looks the more powerful fighter. At risk of giving up this his is back nice, Springer. This is nice body control from Foster. I like this. Yeah, credit to Foster. Obviously an experienced guy, 4-2 and two amateur record. Realised he wasn't getting the better of these striking exchanges. And here, he's here he should switch to the, the single. Head to the inside. There he does it. There he does it. He's switching on the single. And back to the double. There we go. Beautiful work from Rory Foster. Brings it down to the canvas with 10 seconds. Springer trying to now. use the cage to get back up. Nice work from Foster. I like to see him throw a couple shots. Just to finish out the round strong. Didn't manage it. Managed to hold the take down, hold the position against the cage. Decent first round from both fighters. Yeah, it's got to be a bit of a confidence booster for Foster. He's getting the uh, worst part of the striking exchanges at the start of that round, but rallied towards the end and got that takedown. As you mentioned, David, just mixing up. Just the threat of going to the single, yeah. then back to the double. It opened, it opened up. up the double again by going for the single. You know, something in that round for both fighters. Round two. Just about to get underway here in this featherweight bout. Justin Springer in the red shorts, Rory Foster, the blue bad boy shorts. Is this going to turn into a, a classic striker versus grappler affair? Or is Rory Foster going to rally a bit on the feet here? Because he was at risk of getting overwhelmed in the first, David. Quite right. And it's going that way again. Although Foster did land a few shots in the first. I definitely think that's not where his, his advantage lies. He he seems, has, he's answered with a jab, hasn't he, at times? He has, he has. He seems quite rangy. He's a little bit taller, a little bit taller fighter. Not as well built as Springer. Springer looks more of the, uh, shall we say, athletic type. Yeah, from that point Nice shoot beautiful. for the double. But a good sprawl from Springer. Ooh. Switching on the single now is Foster. Will he pick up the ankle? I'd like to see him pick up that ankle. Good effort from Springer there to avoid that because he was very deep on that double. Really deep. But he dropped to the knee. He dropped to the knee and he got deep, but then he got sprawled on. And now Springer's doing a good job of tying up this, uh, this left arm of Foster, stopping the ankle pick. But again, he's deep on the hips. Now the takedowns. But now it's all about down. keeping him down. Someone as explosive as Springer. He's going to be hard to put down and he's going to be hard to keep down. But that's what Foster needs to do. The question is though, David, and you, you mentioned the athletic build. Is this going to start to take its toll as the, as the rounds go on for Springer? He throws everything with 100%. Potentially. Potentially. It's a factor of how he trains. Does he train for, for, for three rounds of intense activity under the bright spotlights? Coming from an independent gym, how professional is his training? We, we just don't know these questions, yeah. the answers to these questions. And there's that double. Right in front of us now here in the commentary area. He's linking his hands together, his foster trying to suck those hips away from the cage. I think he'll do it. But Springer's trying to pop back up every single time. He's not going down easy. Yeah, Springer making Rory Foster fight for every single one of these takedowns. It's going to be taking a huge amount out of both gentlemen here. Exactly, it's not easy trying to fight, fight for a takedown like this. And it's mentally, it's mentally wearying. You know, when you're taking someone down and instantly they pop back up and you've got to do all that again, knowing how hard it was the first place. Yeah, I guess the question is though, David, as well. I mean, when you start to look, if this fight does go the distance, you know, Rory Foster's simply pressuring his man up against the cage now and he, he's dictating where the action is. Even this, if is he control. Control. Yeah. this is octagon control. This is octagon control. You know? But he's got to mix it. He's got to mix it with the effective aggression, with the damage of the strikes that we're going to see now. Let's see him posture up. 
And I want to shout it. He's right in front of me. I want to shout. Posture up. Throw some strikes. You know, he's getting the position on the ground. Then he's got to use it, you know. How are the judges seeing the fight when it's a wrestling fight? They're seeing the control. But are they then going to score Springer's, you know, his striking early on? Yeah, very close bout here. Well, close second round, certainly. I mean, interesting to see what advice both corners are given here. Third and final round about to get underway here in this intriguing featherweight bout as Rory Froster takes on Justin Springer. Now, I have to imagine that between rounds, Springer's corner would have told him, you probably won the first, and we don't know about the second. You need to go out and win the third. Whereas, Foster's corner. I think Foster's corner would have told him he needs to finish this fight. Yeah, quite possibly. Because he probably lost the first, and maybe he won the second with the wrestling. Yeah. But leaving it in the judges' hands, that could be very dangerous for Foster here. So, I would have think they would have told him to come out and win it. Yeah, or certainly at the very least. Minimum win the round, yeah, but I, the I think he, he should be going after the finish. Yeah. You know, it, otherwise it's, it's lap of the God stuff. Oh, and there is a left, left hand. hand. Springer senses some blood, pressing forward now. High kick left hand. Certainly thus far, Springer has looked far more likely to get the finish if there is one in this bout. He's looked to, he's looked to have the crisper striking. And Foster has looked to have the much better of offensive wrestling. Springer's had very good anti-wrestling. Great work from Springer to avoid that takedown. Foster calls the fight to the ground. Referee Springer having Neil no Hall. part of it. Yeah, Neil Hall's not going to let people sit down and pull guard. He's an old school Sambo guy. Foster looks quite tired now. The hand's dropping. Nice left hand, though, from Foster. And an overhand. Nice, that. Springer just dipped the head into the, uh, into the right hand over the top. He's measuring these a bit more, Springer, now. He doesn't want to end up in the clinch like this. The problem with Springer coming forward like that is Foster's timing the shot off it. And he's changing levels very, very nicely. If Foster can link his hands together here, I think he may be able to pull his legs away from the cage. And he's trying to step over that leg. What he's trying to do is use his legs then to drag the leg back to open up uh, Springer into a kind of a split type position from where he can affect the better takedown. Springer looking for a Kimura here, or a switch perhaps. This bout really in the balance. Nice, and this is where Foster can make this count. Springer is in the middle of the ring. He doesn't have a cage to walk up. If he can, if Foster can hold him down and he can work some submissions or some ground and pound, this could be the telling, the telling position of the fight. Yeah, very close matchup. Ten, seconds, Ten seconds, though. Wow, what such, another close round. Such short rounds in the amateur game, you've got to make everything count. Every second has to count. Yeah, it's a great point. With these three-minute rounds, positionally, becomes so important. And it, we mention it all the time. Here in the commentary position, it's impossible to judge a fight. But I really wouldn't be surprised, David, to see that go either way. And I, no, I don't think you could argue course. with either score. I don't think so, no. Both fighters had elements of, uh, of, of dominance in, in different areas. Yeah. And it's just how the three judges see it today. I'm not going to call it. So we hand We're over. the winners. Yeah. We're the winners, Dave. We're the winners. As we hand over to our MC for the official verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we're going to finish the we have a split decision, ladies and gentlemen.